This is Clarence. He's an Argonian living in Skyrim looking for a companion to settle down with until the eventual end of the world by dragons. And by settle down, I mean set her down with a sacrifice to his god Boethia. Our story begins with Clarence on his way to being executed and a dragon interrupting our beheading. Clarence was presented with a very difficult decision. Who will he use to escape the dragon? The rebels that were going to be executed alongside him, or the Imperials that seemed more likely to survive a dragon attack? Clarence never was one for authority, and so he took his chances with the rebel. After the rebel took Clarence's bindings off, his fists were eager to get punching, and without thinking, he swung on the first target in sight. With that idiot out of the way, Clarence pressed onwards, taking out the weak Imperials that were no match for his lizard power. He was so strong that he even killed a bear in three swings. Clarence emerged from the caves into a world of fog, barely able to see 10 feet in front of him. He made his way down a rocky road, punching any living being that blocked his path, and stumbled upon the village of Riverwood. No, you didn't. Clarence had to make sure his escape from the dragon didn't reach any authorities, and made it his goal to kill anyone that had evidence of the dragon attack on Helgen. With Clarence now wanted by the authorities, he made a mad dash from Riverwood and continued down the rocky path through the fog. Unfortunately for Clarence, he ran right into an Imperial patrol, and somehow they knew of his crimes in Riverwood and he found himself in a fight for his life. Clarence was on the back foot of the battle, heavily injured and with no healing items. He was forced to once again make a run for it. With a stroke of brilliance, Clarence remembered he was trained in restoration magic and used the art of healing to get himself back in the fight and finished off the last of the Imperial scum. No witnesses. Further along the path, Clarence was greeted by a group of adventurers that used him as bait, and the local guards ambushed him while Clarence was stuck in dialogue. He tried to desperately escape on low health, but the guards used the iconic arrow in the knee technique and took him out with a fatal blow. This time Clarence was ready, and decided that while he could go on a murdering spree across all of Tamriel, it was probably counterproductive to his dream of finding a wife, and so he submitted himself to the guards and was taken to prison. Inside his prison cell was a dead body carrying a lone lockpick, and Clarence used it to make a daring escape, only to be immediately caught once again outside of the jail as it led straight into the center of Whiterun City. Clarence decided it wasn't worth escaping and swallowed his pride for once, serving his full prison sentence and being let out early for good behavior. Out on the town as a free man, Clarence laid eyes on the most beautiful woman he had ever seen, Isolde. It was love at first sight. Clarence knew she was the one. Clarence pretended to listen to her as she explained she needed 10 mammoth tusks in exchange for her heart, and set off to finding the mammoth tusks right away. Clarence wasted no time, and knew the easiest way to get a mammoth tusk was directly from the source. And so he charged straight into a giant's camp not far from Whiterun, and began swinging on the first mammoth he saw. So the mammoth proved to be stronger than he initially thought, and Clarence took his anger out on an old lady to regain his confidence. What do you think you're doing? Oh. That didn't last very long. Clarence blamed his recent failures in combat due to the rain that made the ground slippery, and headed to the local inn to rest through the night in hopes that tomorrow would have clearer weather. As he was paying for his room, two drunkards started fighting right in the middle of the inn, and Clarence couldn't wait to jump in and show these rookies his lizard power. He got a bit carried away and accidentally killed both the men, but nobody seemed to mind. Shouldn't leave things around to trip over. After his defeat at the hands of a mammoth, Clarence decided to find an alternative method to acquiring the mammoth tusks his bride-to-be Isolde wanted, and beat down local bandits outside Whiterun, leading him to their stronghold. Inside the bandit caves, he discovered that the bandits were killing mammoths to survive, and found a multitude of mammoth tusks he was sure the bandits weren't going to miss. After taking the rest of the tusks he found in the caves, and a few extra goodies, Clarence had accumulated nine tusks, one away from the ten Isolde asked for. The only issue is that Clarence had no idea where to find another tusk. Not even Bellathor was selling them. After spending hours in the wilds to no avail, he made his way back to the Whiterun Inn and decided to drown his sorrows of being so close yet so far away with some Nord mead. <gasps> there it was. Clarence had found it, the final tusk he needed. Using his clever lizard techniques, he stealthily took the tusk from behind the innkeeper's back and brought it straight to Isolde. Thank you. Wait, she only needed one. Clarence knew there was only one place in Skyrim to be wedded under the goddess Mara, and that was the Temple of Mara in Riften. Upon making it to Riften, Clarence was confronted by a guard attempting to extort gold from anyone trying to enter the city. And Clarence... 
Yeah. Back in jail, this time in a new city, Clarence was surprised as he had assumed taking out that corrupt guard would have been seen as a favor. Regardless, after serving his sentence, he made his way to the Temple of Mara in search of a priest to officiate his wedding with Isolde. To receive the touch of Mara, you must first act as her hands in the world. Explore the facets. Yeah, whatever. Just tell me what to do. Mara has reflected an image to me. At the foot of the throat and the young woman, almost a girl. Yeah, okay, anyways, the priestess wanted to test Clarence's faith or whatever and send him off on a quest to watch other people fall in love to make sure his was genuine or something. He made his way to Iverstead, as he was instructed to do, and met a young girl named Fastred who wanted to run away to Rifting with her boyfriend to get married and live happily ever after. She asked Clarence to convince her drunkard father to let her leave Iverstead, but unfortunately upon entering the local tavern, he was assaulted by the whole town, who seemingly didn't appreciate the lizard's meddling in local affairs. Having failed his quest, he returned to the Temple of Mara where he was forced to lie about the events that transpired, and the priest congratulated him on facilitating young love. Unfortunately, Clarence was starting to realize that this priest wasn't actually going to help him get married, and was just wasting his time to devote his life to Mara. Clarence had no time for devotion as he was about to get married, and so he went to the Riften Tavern to find a rental priest that could officiate his wedding officially. Clarence was told that all he had to do was wear a special necklace and that was good enough for Mara. Is that an amulet of Mara? So he brought Isolde to Riften and was finally married. I declare this couple to be wed. This calls for a celebration. After cooling off from their spectacular wedding, it was time for Clarence's plan to take form. All his deeds have been done in the name of his true god, Boethia, the Daedric Prince of Deceit, and it was time to take his love, Isolde, on her final journey. What? Why are you looking at me? Sure, whatever. No more! I yield! I yield! After being made an outlaw in Whiterun, Clarence made a mad dash for Bjorlum the Carriage Rider, but just before he could make it, he was shot down. No, he's still alive! Get up, get up! Yes, let me in, let me in! No, no, no! Yes! Clarence had escaped once more. Upon his trek to the Pillar of Sacrifice, Clarence was confronted by a dragon lady thing, and he wasted no time taking care of the problem. The time has come for Clarence's ultimate betrayal to appease Boethia. Is there something I can help you with? Oh yes, I do think so. Clarence led his wife to the pillar and sacrificed her. What is it? And sacrificed her. Why isn't this working? Hello? Turns out, in order to sacrifice anyone to Boethia, you need the quest Boethia's Calling, which is only available at level 30, and Clarence was level 5. <sighs> Having utterly failed the speedrun, Clarence settled on sacrificing Isolde to a pressure plate instead. 